How to sculpt 3D flowers is hugely popular and you should have it in your nail art arsenal. So that's gonna show you how to do that and also a killer double tip technique right now. All right, I recently posted a short demo of sculpting 3D acrylic roses. And we got a lot of comments just looking for a bit more detail on the instruction behind that. So that's what we're gonna get into today. For my flower designs today, we're gonna be using Slick Pour Colors Lemon Zest, Silk Peony, Wine Flight, and for the leaves, we're using Herbivore and Invested. Let's get into the demo. So I have my Young Nails Liquid along with my Young Nails 3D Imagination Art Brush. This brush is really huge for doing 3D work. I, When I first started getting into nails, I tried to do some 3D art with my regular acrylic brush. Not the same. So if you're interested in 3D, definitely get yourself a specialty brush. With my flowers, I'm gonna be doing some double dipping here. So I'm gonna grab all three of my flower colors and have them out here ready to go. Okay, so for my base, I have a just cover pink acrylic nail and it's already top coated and the flowers will have no problem sticking to it because remember acrylic sticks to just about anything. So I top coated the nail so that it'll have a shiny base and then the flowers will be matte on top. All preference, you can do it however you would like. So when I'm doing a double dip method, personal preference again, but I typically like to start with my lighter color and then I'll just go over here and pick up a darker. When I do it in the reverse, it tends to drown out some of the lighter color when I pick it up. See how I kind of lose some of that yellow? So typically I try to go light to dark. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my yellow, follow that up with some of my pink. I'm gonna drain some of that liquid out and set down my first petal. When I'm working with in 3D, I'm always working fairly wet so that I'm able to spread out some of the product. And typically when doing roses, I'm working in kind of a C shape. I then drain my brush really well and just start using the body of the brush to press out the design. This is gonna give a nice thin 3D effect as well as the bristles of the brush start to kind of look, it gives it that like petal like look. So it's really cool when you're doing flowers. Okay, so once I get that nice and spread out, you can see how thin the petals are. So even though it's a 3D design, it's not gonna be something that's really bulky and in my way. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing and I'm gonna place my second pearl right over here in a slightly smaller C. Go in my yellow into my pink and go ahead and just set that down right here. Wipe my brush and start working that around. Always remember that the room temperature has a lot to do with the acrylic as it's setting up. We're a little warm today, so mine's setting up a little bit faster. Personally, I prefer that when I'm doing my 3D art, just because I'm working in such small pearls that I, I like that it's starting to set up. It gets a little bit more pliable and I can kind of move it around. So you can see I'm able to spread a very small pearl a very far distance. So now we're starting to get into our rose design. The petals are overlapping each other. And as they're all starting to set up, this original petal is now fairly dry. I can even go back in there and kind of start to raise that to give it a little bit more dimension. So we're just gonna kind of lift those ledges up. And then just keep working. When I'm doing roses, I really try to focus on not overloading the flower. Typically about three, sometimes four petals is plenty. When you start working in more than that, um, no offense to anyone because I did the same thing, but I call it like a donut. It starts to look like a stack of donuts or a stack of tires or something. It's just because you're overloading it. You don't need a ton. A few petals goes a very far way and you want to still be able to see that kind of dimension where it gets a little thicker, a little thinner, some of the overlapping, but it's not just looking like rings stacked on top of each other. 
Okay, so we're just spreading that one out again using the body of the brush to really get that spread and some of that dimension in there. And I'm going to grab one tiny, tiny little pearl and just set it right in the center of that flower. So just set that down right there. Twirl my brush into a point and just give it a tiny little poke right in the center. And the first flower is complete. So I'm going to go ahead and add to this. We're going to add another couple flowers over here on the sides. This is one of my all time favorite looks. My mentor actually did this, this set of nails on herself for her wedding and that was years ago and I've still always done this design. It's just beautiful. I love the nude with the neon flowers. I love the two tone flowers. It gives such a cool effect. So now same thing, I double dipped into my yellow and my purple. I'm gonna turn my finger a little bit over here so you guys can see what's going on. As I'm working in these little side areas, I know that I'm probably not gonna get a full flower in, so I'm kind of just working over here to, look, to create little layers. I want it to look like the flowers are, you know, just kind of coming off of the side of my nail. So this one is probably not gonna be a complete flower. We're just going for a couple petals over here. It's okay to push that right up against the other one. Again, just pushing all the product out using the body of my brush to really kind of spread it. I'm gonna do the same thing one more time into my yellow, into my purple. I'm gonna drain that just a bit because this is a small little surface I'm working on over here. Set that one right in the center, let it settle a little bit. You don't want to jump right in and start pushing everything around. Give it a second to start setting up. Again, the room temperature definitely has an effect. But So these ones are setting up pretty quickly. But if you're working somewhere and it's a little cooler, just give it a few seconds. You don't want to just rush the product right away. Okay, and I'm going to go for one more right in the center of that. And set that one down, wipe my brush. Okay. Now I'm going to work on the same thing over here. You guys might be able to see this side a little bit better. So we're going to go again with one of the pink or the yellow and purple. And same thing, I don't have a ton of room over here, so I'm probably not going full flower. I'm just going to pop a couple petals in over here. Set that down, let it set up, wipe off my brush. It's very important to be wiping your brush in between time because you also want to keep in mind that your brush is going to act like a sponge. So if we're leaving a lot of liquid in the brush, you're transferring that back to your acrylic as it's starting to set up. So it's going to continue to be runny. So you want to make sure you're wiping your brush. Also helps with getting any product that may be starting to get stuck in your brush. Frequent wiping of your brush is going to keep them in better condition. Same thing, small pearl, double dipped, grab that, set it down, wipe my brush, and start fanning that one out. This is such a fun little springtime coming into summer design, get some nice color going on. Something like this, you're definitely gonna wanna charge for. Typically, I would say 3D work is about $10 a nail, if not more, given if we're doing, you know, if we were covering the entire nail and flowers, obviously something like that is gonna be a bit more expensive. But just a couple flowers here and there, it doesn't take me a whole lot of time to whip out, but you definitely wanna charge for them. One really nice way to practice, what I did a lot, when I wasn't um, as confident in my flowers, but I wanted to work on them, I would sit in all my downtime and put flowers on the caps of my acrylic jars. The reason I did that was it was just a nice place to put them down and it was something for my clients to see when they came in. So if it wasn't something they knew that they wanted, maybe they would see it and get inspired. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the acrylic flowers that are here. So I'm gonna set these colors aside and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my greens. I have, I'm sticking with the two-tone vibe for my flower or for my leaves. Okay, and I'm gonna grab my two-tone leaves here again. When I'm double dipping, I'm typically starting with my lighter and then going into my darker. These colors are a little lo less contrasting, but I still like to give it a little bit of dimension. I'm gonna wipe my brush and just start pushing that product down kind of into a leaf design. 
it's still pretty wet, so it might kind of give me a second before I can start to give it some indentions. Okay, got that one there. I'm gonna stick some over here in this little corner. This is a really fun way to get creative. Definitely set yourself apart. 3D art isn't um, always as common, so it's definitely something that you can add to your menu. Clients love it. Clients love to watch the act of it even just because it's interesting. It's very fun. Okay, a couple more leaves and I think we're good to go. So as they're setting up, I'm just starting to give them a little bit of like a vein like a typical leaf would have and get it into its shape a little bit. I'm gonna touch just a little bit of that light to add to that leaf and get some of that dimension going again. Slick pour is really great for doing 3D just because we do have such a wide range of colors. So when you get done, you have the option to top coat. You can use a non-wipe top coat like finish gel and apply it to the entire surface of the nail. Personally, I really like the dimension that it gives when the acrylic is just raw. You can still see some of these little veins in the petals that were put in place by the bristles of the brush. I like the textured look. I like that it's shiny and that the acrylic is matte. Again, this is all preference. If your client feels like it's gonna bother them by being textured or they like the shiny look, then you can go ahead and use a non-wipe top coat to seal the design. Hey guys, what's going on? We hope you love our videos. Let us know in the comments below what you wanna see next. To see more, head over here. To subscribe to our channel, head over here.